From Chicago's Can TV, a look at the week's events is reported in the newspapers, in the blogs and online, and on radio and TV. This is Chicago Newsroom. Well, hi there. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm Ken Davis, and it's Chicago Newsroom. Would you indulge me in quoting liberally from The Daily Show just to get things rolling today? As we all process in our own way, you know, Tuesday's election results. Well, it turns out this was a great election for the Republicans. But as we all awoke yesterday, we suddenly realized it was also a great day, a spectacular day for all of us, for America, too. As The Daily Show reported on Tuesday night, at approximately 1127 Eastern Time, the Republicans gained control of the United States Senate and the results were spectacular and immediate. The economy now suddenly growing at a robust 3.5%. Gas this morning under three bucks a gallon. Stock market at record levels. Deficits cut in half. 10 million Americans now have health insurance and unemployment is at sub 6% for the first time since that feckless, golfing, worthless guy Obama was elected president. So you see, Things are already better. It's morning in America. <laughs> and of course, we've now also seen the actual price tag on the sleeve of uh, the state of Illinois, too. What does it cost to purchase this distressed asset? About 65 million bucks. But regardless of what side you were on, and statistically, if you're watching this, then more than half of you voted for Bruce Rauner. Congratulations to you. Let's just say, um, Illinois will now truly be a laboratory for divided government, a deeply partisan Republican against a deeply entrenched legislative leadership, proudly brandishing its veto-proof majority. And this is going to be an interesting time for all. So here, to help us sort of th all of this out today, two of my old friends just kind of brought him in, introduced in alphabetical order just to keep things fair. Delmarie Cobb, uh, we can call you a democratic strategist can't we political consultant political that's fine consultant. Yep. De yeah. and democrat yes yeah and, and proud <laughs> democrat and chris roebling is joining us a founding partner principal of clear Span, clear span strategies llc and i think it's fair to call you a republican strategist you've been yes. one since you were two or three years old no, <laughs> no i switched on the night of Jimmy Carter's acceptance speech. That's when I left the Democratic oh, Party. I never knew Back that. in New York, 1976. Well, we've we've all had the privilege of being together on these sorts of occasions many, many times before. And Chris, I think you you actually got the world record for for station hopping in the last 24 hours. This is probably uh, your <laughs> last appearance not, on Chicago media, but but none more important. Every, uh, yeah, yeah, none, none more is important. more important. <laughs> Nothing more important than the little show. It's like you saved I, it for last, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes, you you've been uh, you've been uh, very busy uh, commenting on this, and I know that it's it's been a it's big Republican night. You. Yeah, big Republican period. You know, uh, I, it's historic. It's a historic, I, I would say, wave election uh, because of the elements at the state level and then at the U.S. House and the U.S. Senate. So you see the Senate flipping over. And I think before we're finished, we'll be at 54 or 55 because of Alaska and um, I think Louisiana mm -hmm. comes in in, in January. Uh, and of course, some, you're just going to win that. You just know you'll win that runoff in Louisiana. Well, I think I think we saw what we saw was uh, Senator Landrieu's level of support, and mm -hmm. it's in sort of mid, maybe lower 40s, and and I don't think that's going to improve. So I I anticipate, but but the point is, uh, the Senate flipped, and the House majority increased significantly, and the uh, Republicans took the governorships also. They, Pretty they much won all the, of them. the majority yeah. of the governorship. Yeah. And so I think there was a real statement by the voters, and that's and that has made it very univocal, I think, and very clear. So it's a big, big night. Okay, Delmarie, as of yesterday afternoon, Democrats and those more leftward leaning were already beginning. It was beginning to dawn on, I'll say us, because after all, I, you know, it's pretty clear where I stand on this <laughs> stuff too, that. This might be much more interesting than we thought. It's not just this. It's not just this complete um, steamrolling. There are other results that are going to come out of this, and one of them is that the. Uh, let's just talk about Illinois first, but I, obviously there's a bigger picture. Bruce Rauner is going to go head to head with Mike Madigan, and that's just going to. I mean, you can sell 
ringside tickets for this. This is going to be interesting. But I want to advance something that I haven't heard too many other people say, and that is that when these two guys actually finally sit down in a room together and take the measure of one another, they're going to discover that their measures are exactly the same, that they're both basically the same guy. Who cares about party? It really doesn't matter when you get to that level. And they're going to say, hey, you know, I know you need that, uh, for political reasons, you need that, that um, minimum wage increase. I don't care about that. You can have that. Give me the sales tax. And they're, they're going to start horse trading, and, and you're going to see a whole level of operation that we haven't seen for years. I've actually already said that, that that's going to be the case. And they have a, a record already of working together. I mean, they worked together on the stand, uh, stand, for, cho stand for Children Stand on Illinois. Children, as right. uh, Karen uh, Lewis called yeah, it. Yeah, it's hard yeah. for me to say yeah. the right way, <laughs> exactly. Uh, they already worked together yeah. on that I mean, when they raised the threshold for the uh, strike vote. So, it's, and, and to expand charter schools and to the $98 million to uh, UNO to uh, open mm -hmm. schools. I mean, so they, it's not like they haven't worked together. Right. It's just that we didn't know about it. It's not like so, they don't see eye to right, eye. Right, so now we're going to know about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure that they see eye to eye. I, I, I think there are very significant uh, differences. And I think that, uh, I, and, and to your description, I would just offer the amendment that I think Rauner is a genuinely, I know this will sound ridiculous in Illinois, et cetera, but I mean, I really think that the guy is genuinely not political. I mean, I, I, I think that's part of the Rauner box. Part of his assertion to the people is, I don't need this job. And I, I'm not looking to be something else. I'm not looking to be senator or use this as a stepping stone to president or something like that. I'm looking to straighten out the state of Illinois. So I, to, to your uh, description, I would just say, I, I think Rauner is going to do horse trading because that's the only way he's going to get an agreement, either with Cullerton or with Madigan. So he is going to do the horse trading. But I think that personal political and indeed partisan political considerations are, are going to recede. At least, it, it's very much like this. There's one rounder, and then there's a Madigan, and then there's a Cullerton. And I, I think you're going to see him trying to move us to fiscal sanity with whatever chits he can exchange. And I, But I think that what you call fiscal sanity is political, because he doesn't have to, I, I mean, I don't care that he's not a career politician, mm -hmm. or that he's not taking a salary, or that he only wants to be there two terms. What I care about are the issues that he considers dear to him. And those issues that are dear to him are issues that I don't think necessarily are the best issues for the majority of people who are in the most need. I mean, he did not support minimum wage. He only came around to minimum wage when it was first discovered, and then with caveats. And those caveats are pro-business, and, and, and they're uh, designed to create an economic climate in, in Illinois that will help other businesses and CEO, CEOs like himself. And, and, then, and then he wouldn't have expanded uh, Medicaid. And look at the people who are on Medicaid. I mean, so when you look at the issues, he's for the privatization of public education. He's anti-union. He wants to create opportunity zones, which he calls them, which is right to work state. So when you look at those, those are all political. So he doesn't have to be political. He is political. The issues he 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 stands for are political. Delmar is off and running. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. And, Roebling? Well, those, those are the arguments that were trotted out in the campaign, and we've heard from the people on that. And he has a mandate now to take those positions that you don't like and to walk them into Springfield and to see how far he gets. I, I think that uh, the, the key element here, honestly, and, and, and obviously I disagree with your characterizations, but let's just talk about the one that is most important. It is the public employee unions. And, and I really, I'll, I, I would advance this as a, as a general theory right now. The single most significant phenomenon that is facing domestic U.S. politics and domestic government is the relationship between politics and the public employee unions. There's no question in my mind about it. And that's why the, why? Most, the most significant victory on the Republican side, the most significant victory on Tuesday night, was Scott Walker. And, and I think that's because Scott Walker has gone directly at the relationship. He changed the negotiating uh, area for the unions, and he cut off union 
monopolies on the insurance side, as you know, and, and he was able to, to save funds and recycle those into education, for instance. That is the, that is the general theory for getting all of our governments, most all of which are in, uh, drowning in red ink, out of their current situation. When, when I hear this discussion about how the public sector unions are the biggest problem that we face, I, 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 I'm almost like physically revolted by that. I mean, I, I just think that is such nonsense, Chris, as with all due respect sure. to an old friend. It's just, right. it's just nonsense. The, the, if you look at Wisconsin, and let's not refight the Wisconsin fight, we've tried three times and lost three times. Five times. But when you look That's at okay. when you look at the the situation that existed in Wisconsin, the 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 teachers union stuff was balanced. It was not a problem. It was not an issue. It was made into a political issue by somebody who wanted to demonize the public service workers well, that, union. I, now, uh, Illinois is a different situation. Illinois, we have massive deficits or whatever you want to call them, unfunded situations. But those are because we had lily-livered politicians of both parties for 50 years who didn't do the things they were supposed to do as they did in Wisconsin. So, you know, we've got lots of really big issues that we have to tackle, social issues and otherwise. Public service labor unions are not a part of it. They're really and, not. And, and that's what I was going to say. And we, and we don't have to see eye to eye on this. I mean, this is about us giving our opinions. And my opinion on, on, on um, unions is that the, the studies have shown that the, the biggest uh, impact to the middle class, the decline of the middle class, is also the decline of unions. And, mm -hmm. and when you talk, and, and as for African Americans, unions are the backbone for the black middle class. There would not be a black middle class had it not been for unions. That's where your Or a white, but let's not. No, but <laughs> truly a black middle class had yeah. it not been for unions. We know there for everybody, but I mean for us, we can say those were the jobs that we were able to get, the government jobs, the teaching jobs. Those were the jobs we were able to get when we couldn't get any other jobs. And so that's how you get the backbone of the black middle class. And when you attack and demonize teachers, for uh, what what I find unbelievable is when the studies show that charter schools don't do significantly better than than uh, public schools and in most cases don't do as well, and yet you're demonizing teachers and you're getting rid of teachers, and the teachers, especially in the black community, which is a matriarchal society and not a patriarchal society, uh, when you demonize teachers and women are the backbone of the black community and you're taking jobs from people when these are the people who have the homes, these are the people who are teaching ahead of the families, these are the people who are the volunteers in communities, and then you're bringing in these young kids because they're trying to offset their college education. And, and they're coming in for two or three days through, I mean, two or three years from Teach America. They have no relationship with the community whatsoever. All this is is a stepping stone. Okay, okay. So here's my two cents. Um, Mr. Roebling? Thank you. First of all, <laughs> I, I'm not demonizing teachers. And second of all, not, uh, Scott Walker certainly did not demonize teachers. And number three, Del Marie, there are more teachers in Wisconsin today than there were no, before. No, but I'm not talking okay, about Wisconsin. May, may I, I please? I, no, I would, but I, I just wanted to say that I'm not going to interrupt okay, so you. I, but I'm, but I'm I, just saying that I'm, not, I'm only talking about but I'm Bruce Rauner and public sector okay, jobs. Great. But I, I don't hear him demonizing anybody, just by the way. And I, and I don't, I don't, I never heard Scott Walker demonizing teachers you never and heard Scott Walker it is demonizing teachers when he was working with all the groups that were trying to undercut not, not the as CTU. A, not as a class I, and and I think but what, Rauner you, what you're, did. If, you're that's not true Rauner, no, talked Rauner about has not demonized yes, teachers right Rauner might say I disagree with Karen Lewis might Rauner might say I disagree with C, uh, with uh, the Chicago Teachers Union he might uh, with Jesse Ruiz he might have those kinds of issues but teachers it, to go back to Wisconsin, and then I want to go to Rhode Island, but the teachers in Wisconsin are now, there are more of them. And the other point that I think you guys and, you know, the folks on your side of the argument have to deal with, in Michigan, in Indiana, in Wisconsin, when those relationships were opened so that people were not, it, union membership was no longer compulsory, in Indiana, it was 93% left the unions. In 
Wisconsin, it was 91%, and I think in Michigan it ended up being 92.5%. So if unions are doing so well for these individuals that you are describing, then I think you've got to reconcile that with the fact that when people have a choice, they leave. Now, Gina Raimondo, this is the second most important victory, the second most important victory on Tuesday night, was the, Democrat gov the incoming Democrat governor of Rhode Island. Gina Raimondo has never demonized a teacher in her life, and she, doesn't, she, and, and she is in touch with all communities in Rhode Island, which even though is a microscopic version of Illinois, it, it really does mirror us and our issues. And what was her pathway to the governorship? As a, as a I think she was a Rhodes Scholar, Yale Law School, Harvard grad, female, liberal, Democrat. What was her pathway? Taking on the pension problem that was created by the public employee unions. So I think you guys are not really I, I would just simply say that's because the well has been so polluted against, against public employee unions that it's, it's a, the pathway for everybody to. The, the, the problem, when I sat down, when Kitty, two friends of ours, Kitty Kurth and Kevin Lampe, brought in Swedish socialist labor journalists to Chicago, and I sat with them at my office for an hour and 15 minutes. We had this conversation. And do you know what the epiphany was for them? They said, w and I'm describing the issues with public employee unions. And they're hearing all of this. They're thinking this is crazy. And they say, but, but Mr. Roebling, it sounds like public employee unions are contributing to your Democratic Party. I said, of course they do. He said, oh, in Sweden, that's illegal. But the, that's the problem. But the problem and is, probably we can't. That is Sorry. But there's no comparison. <laughs> we can't don't compare. Do this. I mean, Sweden. It's absolutely the problem. You would have, to look, you would have to look at everything that's different about Sweden <laughs> uh, to you. talk about this. But the other part of that is, so when, union, the Republicans, so, when the Republicans were in Springfield, were in charge, under Thompson, under Edgar, under Ryan, and there was an opportunity when we had a robust economy and we could have had a rainy day fund and we could have been putting money away in the rainy day fund much like our neighbor Indiana was doing and had far more money in their rainy day fund, billions of dollars when we didn't have a penny. And the reason you do that is for when you have an economic downturn and money is not coming in. Now you go to your rainy day fund like you do at home. That's what you're supposed to do at home. You're supposed to go to your rainy day fund to help you get through the tough times. So we didn't have a rainy day fund and then we had tough times. So that's what has a direct impact as a domino effect on everything else when you're talking about paying bills and no, things like you that. You know, Delmarie, the reason we didn't have a rainy day fund, I, it's, it's very simple. It is very simple. We had no rainy day fund because Governor Thompson, in his wisdom, I disagreed with it at the time. I disagree with it today. I wish he hadn't done it. But he opened up the state to collective bargaining. And so once you open the state to collective bargaining, oh, you, you <laughs> the try. The two have nothing. You, yes, the, the two are intimately related, Delmarie, because when you have the unions coming in for raises, if you have money in the till, they say, and this is what just happened in Waukegan, they say, you have money in the till, we want that as part of our to raise. And so characterize. The, to the, characterize other people who were there in the administration, they were spending money like drunken sailors. So was, the collective what, bargaining was not the So was Mike Madigan standing up against that? Was, was, was John Cullerton or was well, Phil Rock well, or was Emil Jones or, standing up against that? And Pate Where Phillip was the, and yeah, all was, of that? Was Pate Phil, actually, <laughs> Pate Phillip is the only, I believe Pate is probably the only one of that leadership cadre who was consistently, and Lee Daniels probably on some occasions. So you would have Pate, Pate consistently saying, this is crazy, you're all crazy. I think Just this clarify is something for me. Does Sweden have a Supreme Court and does did the Supreme Court enact um, something yeah, they, like uh, Citizens United? Supreme, they've had a because, Supreme Court for... Oh, uh, but do they, if, it's, if it's not legal for the, the public service unions to contribute to one political party, is it legal no, 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 for... No, it's not legal for them to contribute to any, any party. For, I mean to any To, to any political. party. Is That's it also, the is it the also not the, legal for corporations Democratic, to dump hundreds of millions the, of, of anonymous dollars into the, the political the, system? The would you would you agree, Mr. Robling, that that yesterday's individuals event, are that, welcome in Sweden to contribute? Yeah. So an individual union 
member. Are, are corporations individuals there? It, 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 they are everywhere. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so no, he's saying are there are they individuals? Are they people there? too? Their their corporations are are legal persons would, everywhere. Would you agree? <laughs> is, would you agree that this was the first of the John Roberts elections? I mean, we truly saw the first Citizens United election here, didn't we? Billions of dollars just being sloshed well, around. I, I don't. I, Barack Obama said he would never turn his back on public funding, mm -hmm. and he turned his back on, on public, public funding, funding right, long before right. Citizens United. So, well, look, folks who get into this game to pay mm -hmm. the outrageous fees of consultants, political consultants. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm rolling in dough. Yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. I understand. So you guys yeah. are the problem. I never it's, but I'm not a political consultant. But I, I, I take to heart Del Marie's rolling yeah. in dough yeah. issue. Yeah. But I mean, come on. I'm now. The, I, 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 I'm how, still waiting to become we, a rich Republican. You know, what it. is that? How can we sit here and ignore yeah. this sea change that has happened? This Republican sweep that you're talking about yes. is nowhere near as historic as the Citizens United effect on the body politic of the United States of America. It is it is historic in a way that has not nothing like it has well, happened I, in I, my I life. I don't know what I mean. It, it, my position on this, I got into it. My position on this is, you have folks who are going to who are able to contribute, and 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 political speech being the highest value, right? Recognize the First Amendment for a reason. It's it's number one for a reason, and so that's the highest value. And um, individuals and associations through associational rights, also in the First Amendment, get to participate. So you agree with the anonymous part of it too? Well, no, I, I'm, I, I am, uh, here's my catchphrase. I support voter ID, mm -hmm. so naturally I support donor ID, mm -hmm. okay? I think donors should be identified. I, I've always been a disclosure person. That was the George Will position when Buckley versus Viejo came out in whatever that was, 1981 or 73 or whatever it was. But, um, but the, the disclosure and the identification of the donors has got to be on an equal basis. It's got to be equitable across these categories. So, mm -hmm. so you have these various legal uh, legal categories, mm -hmm. and then you've got the entire s political spectrum. And whatever disclosure regime has got to be imposed, it's got to be equal across those categories. That's okay, my. Okay. So, position. as soon as you convince your Supreme Court to go along with that, then get back to mm -hmm. us and let us know how successful you've been with that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about voter suppression. We're seeing today that. Um, uh, I, I, I'm not. I'm not I'm, saying I'm, that no, I, no, believe, no. I believe. I believe there's it's something real. very serious. But you, you are a former commissioner of, the, of yeah. the Chicago Board of Elections, and, and, and these robocalls that went out. It's outrageous. Uh, yeah, Absolutely I, outrageous. And I said that. I said yeah. that yesterday. Anita uh, Alvarez apparently actually is looking Keita. into it. But it's important anyway. <laughs> Ed Burke it's is looking into it. Now it's important. <laughs> if Ed's looking into it, you know it's important. Anita, okay. Ed Burke it's just is a little little right, ribbing. That's right, just right. a come on, it's uh -huh. just a joke. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But <laughs> folks should not toy with the electoral administration process. Okay. As a former commissioner, I'm standing up for the Chicago Board of Election Commissioners. I'm standing up for David Orr. I think they were put into an almost untenable position. Mm -hmm. I think criticism of them for the same day, the experiment in same day voter, okay, which hopefully will never come back again uh, for a lot of different reasons. But, but that's, I think, untoward, that criticism. But folks who attempt to intervene in election administration that's pretty far down the barrel as far as I'm concerned. I'm, I'm sorry, no, you were going to say? No, no, I agree 100% that it was a horrible thing that happened because there was no time to recover from it. Right. And, and which what, was the idea. What I actually wanted to get at, though, wasn't the robocalls, which is, you know, malicious and, and bad. Well, and that was strategic. That, and, and strategic. But I'm wondering about the, uh, the Rauner campaign because, it, and, and I, I, I'm not even terribly critical of this because it's just it's just it's a strategy that apparently worked rather well we heard so much about how Rahner was trying to get the black vote out but I'm beginning to believe that he knew very well that he would never get any black votes and he got no more than than has been gotten by other candidates in the past but instead by running this kind of incessant hammering on on 
uh, Quinn is not your friend. Quinn is not going to do anything for you. What he was successful at was suppressing the African American the vote. The turnout. Only 16 percent. Uh, there was only 16 percent of black turnout uh, in the election. Um, the um, Rauner got. Uh, Quinn got 93 percent of the black vote, mm -hmm. which is still high. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think Rauner's strategy from the beginning, as I said, was when he looked at the electoral map from 2010, was to say, if I just peel off some, mm -hmm. and I didn't think, I don't think he thought he would get volumes. I just think he thought he would peel off some, but. But as it turned out, I don't know that he peeled off a whole lot because, no, as I said, seven percent of black people voted. F I mean, seven percent of black people voted for him, but sixteen percent of black people turned out. Seventy-five percent of white people turned out, yeah. and six percent of Latinos turned right, out. Right, and that th but those numbers are lower. The, the the black and Latino numbers are lower than they were in yes. the in the last election. But you, you guys have got to. You guys have take, uh, need to take this up not with a Tea Party Republican like me, but with Tavis Smiley. I mean, Tavis was on, I, I forget whose program, maybe it was uh, the, uh, the, daily, the news program you were talking about before mm. that opened the show. Yeah. He, he was on one of those shows, one of those night, nighttime shows. He said there's, there is no reason for blacks to turn out in this election. There is no reason. Uh, Obama has given mm -hmm. uh, us no reason to turn mm -hmm. out. And, Ob and, and he took it upon himself, this is Tavis, this is a quote, not mine. He said, uh, there's no reason for Hispanics to turn out. If you take a look at the exactly. communities, these guys shouldn't be turning right. out. And, and that's not Rauner's fault. I, 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 no, and I'm no, not blaming Rauner that, for that either. Um, right. I, I think that Obama's past is catching up with him, and that's what that's what happened na nationally. Not it happened somewhat here. I, do you know that Rauner won? won the Saint Clair Ward. County. Oh, I thought you were going to say right. the 43rd Ward. Rauner won. Well, well, Ronald Reagan won 15 or 16 wards in the city of Chicago, and he won one out of every three precincts. Is that right? Is that really true? Oh, wow. I just got the two minute warning. I have not been even looking at the clock. We got two <laughs> minutes to go. We're oh. just chatting here, guys. <laughs> oh, no. What are we going to do? Let's order some more Wait coffee. Well, Let's let me talk just, about. You know, sorry, well, you, you let deserve let at least a minute of that. Quickly about the black turnout in terms of that. Yeah. There, there are things that Quinn could have done to increase the black turnout. And I think that that's where he missed opportunities. Yeah. Um, to just think that black people are going to turn out, and mm -hmm. unfortunately, they turn out in presidential elections and don't turn out in midterms. Right. And we have got to, as African Americans, understand that it's the midterms that affect you every day. Yeah. The, the yeah. presidential elections, they're big picture. They yeah. may trickle down Very and affect point. you. Very and so point. that's what has to change. You probably even agree with that, right? I, I, think I think people should turn out all the time. All I would love to see. I'd love yeah. to see I'm Sweden levels yeah. of. Okay, <laughs> never, not that I'm moving to Sweden I've or anything. I've never missed an election. Thing, and I'm sure you I, haven't either. I, I got to say one other quick thing, and that is, I don't think people should sell short Rauner's involvement in the most challenged communities of the city of Chicago. It I mean, goes back. Right. Yeah. It goes back more than a, a almost Carol two Felsen decades. More than two decades, or uh, more than a decade, in terms of his personal involvement and personal commitment and he and Diana but spending tens of millions of dollars not maybe not with things a, that you but like there's but there's a you've got Delmarie come I'm not, on I'm not, wait, what no, are you going no. to be satisfied with Listen, for a Republican I'm just saying there's a difference when that's will, what that's what people don't understand what there's and a difference between being being charitable taking time and, no, to go down there to, on to Saturday be, mornings and to spend tens of millions of dollars to be what charitable is he supposed to do and to be and to actually employ people I can be charitable well, all of those and never employ a black person in my life. He, that's there's that, a that, there's that's a, a canard. Big difference. That is a canard. He no, has employed. Not a he has employed. Okay, <laughs> we, we we just received word. Okay. We have to stop. No, um, Hillary Clinton's <laughs> prospects now. Zip. Well, you know, I was a Hillary supporter, yeah, so I I'm remember. still going to be a Hillary supporter. You think, do you think this helps her? we got to go. <laughs> yes or no? Does yes. it help her? Yes, it does. You, thank you very much, Chris. <laughs> thank you very much, Delmarie. You've been watching Chicago Newsroom. It's a, it's a uh, you know, it's a, yeah, it's on Can TV, and you can, you can watch us right here. We've really got to go. <laughs> we got to go. <laughs> thank you, guys. We'll see you next week with another show, hopefully at least as interesting as this. Bye, bye for now.